6 iodines on a benzene. How do you get that, you might wonder. Well, if we fire a nuclear bomb at a benzene production facility, the released radioactive iodine will combine with the benzene to form hexa-iodobenzene. Just kidding. Or am I? We can just do the chemistry equivalent. For that, we go back in time to when the good chemicals were still used. At the end of the 1800s, a German, of course, thought it was a good idea to put the innocent food preservative benzoic acid into the pits of hell, called hot fuming sulfuric acid with an excess of iodine. What arose from this pit was the thick, dense monstrosity called hexa-iodobenzene. With a molecular weight of 833 grams per mole and a density of 4.6 grams per centimeter cubed. You might think, wow, this must have some very useful properties. That's why you're going to make it. Wrong. It is insoluble in pretty much every solvent. If it dissolves, it will only be a tiny amount and it has a melting point of 430 degrees Celsius. That's above the capabilities of most lab equipment, but it will start decomposing at 370 C. Its applications? None. And that's exactly why. We have to see this insoluble abomination for ourselves and see the contender for most useless chemical. So first, I have to make fuming sulfuric acid, also called oleum, which is a solution of sulfur trioxide in concentrated sulfuric acid. Sulfur trioxide is annoying and what I imagine the soil in hell to be made of. So it is only suitable. To make that, we need to dehydrate the dehydrating agent concentrated sulfuric acid. So you can probably already imagine its reactivity with water. I don't need a huge amount, so I'm going to see if I can get away with being a little bit lazy. So I set up a flask in a heating mantle and add in 140 mils of 96% sulfuric acid. While stirring, I gradually add 150 grams of the dehydrating agent phosphorus pentoxide, which is an excess. They should react pretty much instantly to form sulfur trioxide and phosphoric acid. I attach a short path distillation apparatus to try to distill over the sulfur trioxide, which has a boiling point of only 45 C and a close melting point of 17 C. However, since this short path was apparently too short, only when an ice bath was added to the receiving flask would the sulfur trioxide actually deposit from the gas phase straight to the solid phase into the cold flask. Otherwise, sulfur trioxide vapor simply went through the exit tube into a trap. I also had to grease the joints with sulfuric acid, otherwise the vapors would find their way through them. Overall, it had a really difficult time coming over, and I don't know why in no case it wanted to be a liquid. I stopped it when it looked like enough was inside. Since sulfur trioxide is a master of destruction, it also destroys traces of grease left on the joints, and will turn them into liquid black tar, of which some dripped into the receiving flask, giving a slight discoloration. However, it shouldn't matter for my reaction and it's actually quite common for oleum as well to be discolored because of some tar impurity. I also tried to liquefy the sulfur trioxide again with a heat gun on very mild heat, but it didn't work. So I don't know how much I have exactly, but it's okay. If I take off the stopper, we can see why it's such a pleasant compound to work with. Either way, I will just dissolve all the sulfur trioxide in a random amount of concentrated sulfuric acid to get oleum of a random concentration. After mixing it and allowing it to stir for a while, all the sulfur trioxide has dissolved, giving an orange-ish solution from the tar that is in there. Now that the oleum is ready, I can start making hexa-iodobenzene. So I set the flask in a heating mantle and I add 9 grams of benzoic acid into it. I heat it to 120 C and wait for it to dissolve. I added a condenser without water flow and a gas adapter on top to keep out most of the moisture. When it has dissolved, I gradually add 60 grams of iodine to the fuming liquid. In the literature they added it over the course of half an hour, but I did it way faster and it doesn't seem to matter. When it was all added, I left it to stir at 180C for one day. In this reaction, benzoic acid reacts with iodine dissolved in oleum to form hexa-iodobenzene and some lesser iodinated benzenes, as well as partially iodinated benzoic acids. How it proceeds is first through the reaction of iodine with sulfur trioxide and sulfuric acid, forming the iodine cation that can be seen as a greenish blue species in solution. But it is difficult to observe when concentrated and when there is an excess of iodine. The iodine cation 
is a potent electrophile and can be attacked by the aromatic ring, giving a mono-substituted intermediate. The remaining iodide ion can deprotonate the same carbon to restore aromaticity. This results in a mono-iodinated benzoic acid. Under these high temperatures, this process repeats itself uncontrollably to give fully and partially iodinated benzoic acids and benzenes. At the point that the benzoic acid has many iodines, the electron withdrawing capacity of all the iodines significantly affects the lability of the carboxylic acid group, causing it to concertedly undergo deprotonation, decarboxylation, and iodination to give the much more stable hexaiodobenzene. If we assume this reaction mechanism, we would actually need twice as much iodine to convert everything into hexaiodobenzene. However, many iodine species can exist in this mixture, and some iodinations, especially initial mono or diiodinations, might follow a different mechanism with a different iodine species that is more atom economic. When I return the next day, a bunch of orange solid can be seen that should be the product, and the excess iodine has sublimed towards the top of the flask and into the condenser. I allowed it to cool down to room temperature and then to destroy any remaining sulfur trioxide and dilute the sulfuric acid, I add some water through the condenser. The reaction produces heat, but overall it was quite tame. I transfer all of the contents with more water to a big beaker. Now to destroy remaining acid and excess iodine, I add sodium hydroxide until all the iodine disappears. I also diluted it with some more water. It produces a lot of heat and a lot of iodine vapors come off. When it becomes basic and the dissolved iodine starts being destroyed, it quickly turns transparent and shows the orange color of the suspended hexaiodobenzene. I then allow it to stand for a minute to let the solid settle. I set this up for vacuum filtration to collect all the product. Now it is still contaminated with salts, so I will stir it with some water for a while to clean it up. I then filter it again, wash it with more water, and then with a large amount of acetone. Afterward, I move it to a dish that I heat to 100C and allow it to dry, giving about 17 grams of hexaiodobenzene. However, I want to clean it up even more to be sure it's pure. Since hexaiodobenzene is pretty much unreactive, especially towards oxidizers, it would be unaffected by piranha solution, while any partially iodinated impurities would be destroyed by it. So I cover the material in concentrated sulfuric acid and then slowly add hydrogen peroxide. This creates the piranha solution that reacts immediately with any organic compounds. Initially, it discolors as it is destroying something, and then as more peroxide is added, it clears up again. However, after this, the peroxide does continue to show a reaction. Normally, the presence of iodide decomposes hydrogen peroxide, which is likely what is happening here. No matter how much peroxide is added, it keeps decomposing while the yield stays the same. So care must be taken because it is fooling you into thinking something is happening. When it's done, I dilute it with water. I then filter all of it again and wash it with water and the filtrate is slightly yellow. I discard that and I then wash it with acetone, which also removes more impurities. I move it all to a dish at 100C and the dry weight turned out to be 16 grams. So about 1 gram of impurity was destroyed in this process. Other than it being able to survive piranha, as well as a nuclear weapon, it is a very uninteresting compound, because it doesn't do anything. Perhaps it can be dispersed into a mixture to give an orange paint. Since it is so poorly soluble and unreactive, it is also non-toxic. Or maybe you have a better idea for its potential applications. Let me know down below. That was it. It's just an orange solid. Bye.